Hi, welcome back. Um, this week's session is going to be on branching with measurement and using branching, decomposing um, to subtract. All right, so just a reminder that if you needed the um, handout we've been using with some practice problems, um, you can go to the URL listed on the screen. Our session five focus is going to be using the branching strategy with measurement and then how to use branching with subtraction. Very quickly, we're going to just go through a few connections to core because this really does relate back to session four in which I really um, addressed how this ties into our content and practice standards. Um, but really, the connections with branching is with the properties, place value, and as we do subtraction today, you're really going to see that connection between the inverse relationships. Um, as well as that practice number two about really thinking about the quantities we're working with and those benchmarks. And once again, those properties of associative property um, in which we're breaking apart numbers and associate them in friendly ways. And then today we're going to work with some measurement um, and how to use branching there. So you'll notice here there are several standards that relate to measurement, be it talking about distances or volume, mass, money, um, and how branching can be a part of that. Let's take a look at using branching with some different measurements. So here, for example, we have a box of mac and cheese cost 99 cents, and ramen noodles cost 29 cents. What's the total cost for both? So we're going to use the branching strategy for this. Thinking about landmark numbers, um, and so I can go ahead and think of it as 99 plus 29 cents. So, and this is what we do a lot of times in the grocery store, don't we? We do a compensation method where we think about adding one cent to the 99. So now 99 cents plus one cent equals a dollar and 28 cents. Okay, so that landmark is the dollar. Okay, let's try another one. All right, so here we have a problem about Sal earning $6.90 selling suckers, and then she earned some money also selling gummy bears. So how much money did she earn? What's the question asking me? Well, I'm trying to find out how much Sal earned altogether. So Sal earned blank altogether. Okay, so remember how that answer statement helps kids set up the problem, really thinking about what the question is asking them, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and use a branching strategy for this. Once again, that landmark number in this case is getting to the nearest dollar. So I know that $2.60 plus 10 cents equals $2.70. Here you can see that gets me to the nearest dollar. So now $6.90 plus 10 cents is $7. So I've got seven, eight, nine dollars and 60 cents. Okay, I could write these out as equations to represent that. So she earned $9.60. All right, with the benchmark being the nearest dollar. Okay. Now we're moving on to um, inches and feet when we talk about measurements. So here Noah had some licorice ropes. He loves those. One was two feet eight inches and the other was four feet nine inches. What was the total length for both? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put two feet eight inches plus four feet nine inches. Okay, my answer statement, Noah had blank licorice in all. Okay, all right, so let's see. Benchmark numbers when we're working with feet and inches. Probably 
12 inches equals a foot is important to know. So I can think of this as, you know, I'm going to go ahead and divide this 8 inches up into 3 inches and 5 inches. Would you agree that 5 plus 3 inches equals 8 inches? It is the same as, yes. So now what I notice is I can go ahead and think about 9 inches plus 3 inches as being 12 inches or 1 foot. So now as I look at this problem, I have 2 feet plus 4 feet is 6 feet plus 1 more foot is 7 feet. Okay. And then 5 inches. Okay. Is that reasonable? six feet, seven and a bit, okay? So notice how I thought about how I could break this up into a, into a, um, a combination, decompose, that would get me to a foot, okay? So I've got two feet plus four feet is six feet plus one more, seven feet, five inches. All right, so here's another form of measurement relating 16 ounces and one pound. So here you can see it's a, a situation where I have two bags of flour, and the question is, um, if I need a total of 10 pounds, do I have enough? So if I were to use branching to add, I would go ahead and think about how do I get to that benchmark of 16 ounces equaling a pound? So here I can think about, oh, let's see, I see 2 ounces and 10 ounces, okay. And we would have 14 ounces and 2 ounces equals 1 pound. So do I have enough? Well, I've got 4 plus 5 pounds was 9 pounds, plus one more pound is 10 pounds, 10 ounces, okay? And then do I have enough? Yes, I have enough. I'd have actually 10 ounces left over, okay? So here you've seen three different forms of measurement. Um, you will see on your practice sheet, you can actually use this for um, combining time. And once again, you're getting to the nearest whole hour. 60 minutes equals an hour. Um, so you can do this with all different forms of measurement, okay? All right, so now let's take just a quick look at how we can use branching um, when we're subtracting, okay? All right, so really, um, when we think about branching, it's decomposing numbers to make them easier to work with. So for students, um, when we subtract, breaking numbers down by place value is often a friendly way. Um, I must say, I tend to use branching strategy um, more frequently when I'm adding, um, but I do feel it might have a purpose um, for many situations when subtracting. So let's take a look here at 68 minus 42. I can think about subtracting in chunks or parts, okay? So here I could think of it as 68 minus 40, okay, equals 28, and then 28 minus 2 equals 26. So did I subtract 42? I did. I just did it in smaller pieces or chunks, okay? So here I can see I got a difference of 26. All right, let's take a look at another one. 50 minus 16. So I could go ahead, think about this as 10 and 6 is the same as 16. So because kids really are working hard at understanding and knowing their 10s and how to add and subtract multiples, I can subtract 10. And then thinking about 40 minus 6, once again, they're very good at their combinations of 10. So they're thinking 34 and 6, or 6 and 4 is that 10, plus 30 more is 40. Did I subtract 10 and 6? I did, to make a total of 50 minus 16. 
so the difference is 34. Okay. So you can see it's very much um, subtracting in somewhat of a place value break apart strategy. Okay, just representing it maybe a little bit differently. Um, so could be a tool that students prefer to use. So I could think about 506 as 500 plus 6. So, gosh, I'm pretty good at even doing this in my head, really. But I'm going to represent it here. 900 minus 500 is 400. So I've subtracted the 500. 400 minus 6 is 300. And 94. Okay, once again, you can see the power of really understanding combinations of 10. All right, so did I subtract 506? I did, and my difference is 394. Okay, so hopefully that just gives you an idea of how this might look with, with um, subtraction. All right, so just a reminder, um, you can go to tinyurl.com, BPS Strategies for all of the virtual sessions and resources. Um, and then next time, session six um, is going to be working with the open number line um, and addition. So thanks, have a great day.